Okay, so as we all know, um, sewage is a serious problem here in San Diego. In 2017 alone, beaches were closed for 167 days in the San Diego area. And then back in February, as we've all heard about multiple times, 143 million gallons of sewage poured into the Tijuana River Valley and then out along our coastal waters. So down in Tijuana and in San Diego as well. Um, so again, as we've talked about, we're the last group to go, so you're going to hear a bit of repetitive information. Um, as the population of Tijuana has skyrocketed the past few years, the infrastructure, um, mainly the sewage system, has stayed pretty degraded, which has become a huge problem, as we all know. Uh, so my name is Michelle Rieger, along with my fellow grad students, Joe Kiley and Mike Hathaway. Um, as we kind of were trying to figure out what we wanted to do this semester, uh, everybody loves statistics, right? So I just opened with a bunch, and that's a really great way to grab people's attention. Um, and as we went through this, listened to different speakers and gathered all the secondary research about what's been going on in the San Diego area, uh, we kind of settled on one, I, one our project uh, of gathering statistical data to help further, you know, um, citizens for sewage and different causes. Uh, so we decided to do a survey. Uh, we decided to do a survey to collect and analyze this quantitative data. Uh, we wanted to get it from residents, surfers, beachgoers, um, just in general, people who've been affected by this. So not necessarily somebody that lives in IV or somebody that lives in Coronado. Everybody in San Diego can be affected by this environmental crisis. Um, these were our key stakeholders as well. So the statistics that we got from this, uh, we want to turn around and obviously help our community with it via Citizens for Humanity or an op-ed, which Mike will talk about later. Um, and again, this data kind of presents that direct insight to those key stakeholders that we identified. Go ahead. And looking at the, the survey that we did, it was an online survey conducted through uh, the Qualtrics, uh, which I think those in the class are probably familiar with, but it's an online uh, system able to provide uh, links to people that we provided through uh, Facebook contacts and uh, aimed at uh, activist groups and, and certainly the politically connected groups uh, in the towns and, and trying to reach the residents that were actually affected by the issue to get a greater sense but really, we've talked about this issue, but to understand how aware they were of sewage bills and the ongoing issue, and also to get a sense of, uh, of what they were doing about it personally and, and get a greater understanding of what could be done in the future. So we, uh, through the non-probability sampling, we collected 121 uh, respondents to the survey, uh, answering 32 questions. Certainly we had some basic uh, demographic questions, understanding where people were from geographically uh, uh, connected to the area. Uh, we saw uh, certainly uh, two different scales that we used, a semantic differential scale that was aimed at uh, using, uh, uh, understanding people's familiarity or awareness of the issue. That was semantic differential being where we look at uh, two ends of a, of a spectrum, unfamiliar and familiar, and people uh, put their answer of how um, they feel about that issue or how knowledgeable they are about that issue. Uh, and then we used a Likert scale, uh, which was the um, eco scale that we developed uh, from a, a scale that was uh, done by um, uh, Stone uh, Barnes in Montgomery from 1995 that uh, used a, uh, a broad range of questions acting ab asking about environmental issues, uh, but that we were also able to use uh, related to the sewage bill specifically. And some of those questions beyond the demographic, uh, we asked uh, about knowledge, uh, get a base level of aware awareness, but then really get a sense of people's uh, action they had taken in the past related to the sewage spills. So either had they participated in city council meetings, had they done uh, online social media posting connected to some of the other things that are going on, uh, had they joined a, an activist group uh, and, and getting a sense of uh, where they were in that area, and also looked at uh, their willingness to, to act in the future. Uh, and we saw some, uh, some interesting uh, results that came out of that. But really the, the big thing that we also uh, provided in our, our survey was a, a chance for the respondents to provide open-ended. Uh, so beyond the numbers and the hard quantitative data, we also were looking to get some uh, qualitative and, and sort of uh, other nuanced information we received from that. So what do the numbers look like? As Joe just talked about, we had 121 survey respondents and the demographic spread as far as gender goes, uh, 59, roughly 60% women, 40% men. That's not too far off what the demographic uh, gender spread is in San Diego County in general. So it seems like we were pretty spot on in getting uh, in getting an even, uh, an even mix from men and women responding to our survey. 90% voted in the last election, which is amazing. 61% uh, see sewage spills as a large problem for US-Mexico relations. And that's very important because uh, what you're seeing here presented is only part of what our entire project was. Um, I'll get into the op-ed piece a little bit later in this presentation. 
but the U.S.-Mexico relations and how we can gain a national audience uh, was really what we wanted to lean on for the op-ed. 68% uh, said they have been affected by the sewage spills in some way. So that could be from walking on the beach with their kids. That could be uh, if they're part of a surfing population. Uh, that could be if it just affects them in, in any way, shape, or form in their daily lives. And two things that we found particularly interesting, 80%, excuse me, 87% of, uh, of respondents are somewhat or extremely likely to sign a petition to combat sewage issues. And 86% of respondents support the, uh, the lawsuit recently filed by the cities of Imperial Beach, Chula Vista, and the Port of San Diego. And I know everybody in this room is familiar with the lawsuit at this point, but uh, just to recap, um, violations of the Clean Water Act is what the lawsuit is leaning on. IBWC is being, uh, well, they're asked to be held accountable um, because they are charged with maintaining, providing funding for infrastructure on both sides of the border, and they haven't done so. Uh, they've had we'll call it a grace period, and uh, when you're threatening litigation and saying this is going to happen, and they come back with, well, we need to conduct another study, <laughs> or, well, this is going to work itself out. And it's just the same old song and dance over and over again. So finally, uh, they pulled the trigger on the lawsuit, and here we go. Um, that's all about litigation for now. I wish we could have sent our 121 year guys. So a couple other results that we found very interesting. Uh, these all came from a T test, and I won't even bother explaining what that is for most people. Um, but some some other interesting things that we found. So just in general, so people in the room who don't uh, deal with statistics a lot. Um, as Joe mentioned, one of our scales was this one to five scale. And you have the ability to, uh, one being you are not aware of something, five being you are aware, one being you are, uh, another one we did was take action. So one being you haven't taken any, five being you've been very active in the past. And the last one we did was one being likely to participate in the future. You're not very likely to participate in anything in the future, five being you're very likely. So on that scale, um, respondents were given the ability to select one through five of how they felt you know, their awareness was for different questions, their um, activism in the past, and their likelihood to be active in the future. Uh, the first interesting thing that we found was gender was a factor in determining the awareness of sewage spills. So those questions were, um, you know, are you aware of sewage spills going on in the San Diego area? The most basic one that some people put a one for. Um, are you aware of the lawsuit? Are you aware that uh, it has health consequences and is affecting border patrol agents operating in the area? Things like that. Um, so what our results showed us after we kind of combined all those questions together uh, was that men were more aware than women were for this overall issue, which we found very interesting um, and incorporated into some of our uh, actions at the end. Uh, and this was statistically significant. And what that means is that these results, um, even though we only had 121 people that responded to the survey, it does generalize to the population uh, of San Diego. Yes, it was a non-probability sample, but um, it still was significant and 0.019 is very significant. Uh, men have taken more action than women to help fix the sewage spill. Again, that was that activism question. Have you been active in the past? Um, are you active now in a group um, or something like that? Uh, average action taken by men was on that one to five scale was 3.24 versus women was 2.78. And again, this was statistically significant. And the last one we thought was very interesting was men are also more likely to participate in events in the future. And this includes signing petitions, doing a beach cleanup, uh, going to a protest, things like that. Men's likelihood to take action in the future was 3.94 on that one to five scale. And women's likelihood to take action in the future was 3.51. So those are very close. But still, um, with all of these, it was just interesting to us that men uh, kind of outranked women in these different aspects um, in all three of these different categories. And one of the things, too, that we looked at, as we mentioned, uh, we allowed people to respond however they wanted at the end of the survey. Uh, and really looking at uh, the, the gamut of comments that we got, I think uh, what really showed to us was that people are, are fed up with the length of time that this has gone on uh, and, and fed up really at, at certainly the politicians that have had the, the ability to do something. Uh, they are, I think, uh, among the responses you see, people are interested in knowing that this is a solution that everybody has to work together and, and, and come uh, you know, together as a group but no, and recognizing the, um, the uh, additional ability that, that Mexico and the U.S. working together have to uh, uh, play in this part. But uh, certainly some people are taking that anger and frustration out on, uh, on the politicians, but they also recognize the, the, the health effects of it. But really throughout the whole uh, process, just frustration at the length of time that this is. 
has, has gone on and, and recognizing that uh, it's not just a San Diego problem, it's not just a Mexico problem. This is something that, you know, yes, it's happening in a, in a border uh, spot, but it's, uh, it's something that, that goes beyond just a, a one specific area. So where are we now? Um, it appears as if things are moving in the right direction. The, the needle needs to be moved more aggressively, obviously, but Mexico just pledged four and a half million dollars to the improvements of their infrastructure. That falls painfully short of the $350 million that the Baja California government estimated that would be needed to improve this infrastructure to, to an acceptable level. EPA just uh, just issued or just awarded $330,000 to groups that uh, that were helping monitor, uh, monitor sewage on both sides of the border. Um, how do we move the needle further? How do we how do we get from where we are now, which uh, at a lot of times we feel like our hands are tied with with the litigation going on, with uh, them needing approval from the State Department to get more funding? What can we do to get more national attention? That's where the op-ed comes in, and so we spent a lot of time uh, developing an op-ed that would have a national target audience and that would have national focus. And so with the op-ed, uh, we looked into focusing on national security. Uh, interestingly enough, um, Congresswoman has just called on upon the Navy to uh, to conduct a study uh, about the effects on, of the sewage on uh, on all the South Bay, well, excuse me, all the all, all the citizens in, in Southern San Diego County, and it's of particular interest to the Navy because a new six hundred million dollar facility is being constructed south of Silver Strand Beach over the next few years. That's going to be the training ground uh, for our nation's most elite uh, elite Navy SEALs. So that they're going to be spending countless hours in those waters, and if, uh, if flesh-eating bacteria, if E. coli, if things like that are causing pauses in training and, and uh, hitting the pockets of the U.S. government, um, what's that going to look at? What's that going to look like for the effectiveness of the training of our soldiers? So uh, we didn't go into so many details in the op-ed, but we did mention a national security piece. Uh, also, also mentioned our, our border agents and, and why should they have to be subject to those types of conditions when if you went into any other establishment and the employees were trudging around in toxic waste, it would be shut down immediately. So why is there a double standard in that regard? Um, based on the numbers, based on the data, what do we need people to do? Obviously, women need to be a little more active. I understand uh, probably why the numbers reflect the way they do in men uh, being more likely to be active. It's, it's, a huge, um, it's a huge collection from the surfing population that are taking a stand on this. Yeah, there's a huge community of women surfers in San Diego, but men outnumber women in the surfing population for sure. I, I don't think anybody would argue that. Um, additionally, <clears throat> at a second point, excuse me one second. Uh, additionally, we need to increase the pressure uh, for declaring a national state of emergency. Uh, we need to be uh, electing politicians and, and holding politicians accountable uh, so we can keep the IBWC's feet to the fire on this. And, uh, and gaining national attention is just something that we endeavor to do with the op-ed if we can get that, uh, if, if we can get it actually nationally published. Uh, lastly, that's when we can move into the evaluation part to see how well we've done. If we do, uh, if we are lucky enough to, to, get this, to get this pushed on a national level, we can re-implement the same survey after a certain amount of time to see if we've increased awareness, to see if we've increased the likelihood to take action, to see if we've, if we've increased activism. And so this is an ongoing process. This, is, this doesn't end right here. Uh, you're getting a few slides about what we've looked at and what we've focused on, but there's a lot more work to be done and we look forward to pushing this in the future. Uh, I'll add, can I add two yes, please. Um, so the, the op-ed as well as Mike mentioned with that national tone, we obviously wanted to use the statistical data that we gathered from our survey in that as well um, to just help uh, kind of bolster the argument that we present, um, but on a national scale. And then I had a second point and now I can run it. Well, uh, we're, providing, we're providing hard uh, quantitative data right. that uh, that politicians can lean on now. So with these surveys, with this statistically significant data, it gives politicians something to say, hey, this is a problem proven this way, this awareness is lacking in this way. It, it just gives them something to uh, to bolster their argument. And the other thing too is 2018 is an election year, right? Local and uh, for some higher level seats. Um, and we had so many quotes up here. Our statistical data and the quantitative data is great. Um, it was significant, 
Uh, but it was those quotes that really jumped out to us as well, which happens sometimes. The qualitative can kind of grab you maybe a little bit more than the numbers. Uh, but the other thing we wanted to emphasize, too, is that the citizens need to get out and vote in local and in national elections. So, And that was demonstrated by how many times they said, these politicians need to go. Nobody's doing anything. They got to go out of office, things like that. So that linking of you know, what you say and what you do, which all the groups uh, I think would agree with is, is just very important. It needs to be emphasized either through a media campaign or a protest or something like that. And that is all we have. Happy to take questions.